Hello dental online trainers. I'm excited for you to follow me along on this path or photo protocol that we utilize every day in our practice. It's really important that you grab your cameras, your lip retractors, your mirrors, your contrasters, and your team members so that you can do this along with me. I'd like to introduce Becca. She's gonna be our model for today. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out with the full face photos. Having Becca in the assistant chair allows me to be sure that I am parallel to her vertical axis. Also, I can make sure that I'm parallel to her occlusal plane. When we're going to take full face photos, we wanna make sure we have a couple settings on our camera. We wanna make sure we're set on aperture priority with an autofocus on the lens and an f-stop between nine and 11. What we're gonna do is when I'm looking at Becca, I'm gonna make sure that I'm framing the shot slightly below her chin and slightly above her head. For those going through the AACD accreditation process, it's really important that we have it horizontal. Another trick that I'm gonna show you is that when I'm taking her photos, I'm gonna have her put her hair behind her ears. This allows me to see both sides of her face to make sure that I have an even amount on either side and I'm shooting from straight ahead. So I can notice that I see more of the right side ear than the left, so I'm gonna have her turn a little bit. And what's gonna happen is that I'm gonna move back until I can frame this shot. When I'm taking the photo, I'm gonna push the shutter button halfway down. This will allow the camera to autofocus, and then I'll press the shutter button the rest of the way to take the photo. So again, I'm gonna hold the camera by pressing it in my palm of my hand, having my elbows in, supporting it, and then going to have her smile big. Perfect. When I'm trying to make sure in terms of the photos that see even amounts of her ears on both sides, I framed it correctly from top to bottom and that she's in focus. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some other photos or go through our photo protocol. So I'm gonna have her turn her chair 45 degrees and then she's gonna be continue looking that way. We're gonna just make sure that we have the same frame. I'm gonna move to the same spot that I was. Perfect. And then we're gonna move her so she's a complete 90 degrees. We wanna see her profile. We're gonna take her profile, both teeth together, lips together and then smiling. Thank you very much. Now that I've moved Becca back facing me, we're gonna make sure that we're seeing her from straight, straight in the front. I'm gonna make sure that I can see both sides of her ear evenly. I'm gonna tilt her this way, chin down just a little bit, open just a little bit. And what we do is we call this the Emma or lips at repose shot. So we're gonna go ahead and take that shot. You wanna make sure you see a little bit of space between her lips and her teeth. The lips in repose helps us when we're treatment planning a smile design. What's really important is that we have the correct amount of tooth show that is age appropriate. So there are some people who are very young, they've worn their teeth, and what happens is their teeth then do not show anymore. That can age them quite a bit. The reason we'll take this photo is that we need to decide how much tooth length do we need to add or is there too much that we need to talk about intrusion or other things of that nature? So the last full face photo that we like to take is really nice in terms of when you're utilizing intraoral scans and also completing a digital face bow. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have these lip retractors that I'm gonna utilize. So I'm gonna place these in. You'll notice that I'm going to have the handle facing down and then rotate it in. I find this to be much more comfortable for the patient. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in. What you'll notice is that Becca is taking them from behind and pushing her lips out. A lot of times when patients have it, they'll pull the retractors back, and in reality, you want the lip retractors to be pulled out to pull the lips as far away as you can. I'm also gonna frame the picture the same way that I did for the other full face photo, slightly above her head, slightly below. I wanna be on the same plane as her. I wanna make sure that her teeth are slightly apart. I'm gonna have her close just a little bit, perfect. I'm gonna snap the photo. So the reason we take this photo is two reasons. One is when we're doing a digital face bowl, when we're trying to align the teeth and the face, what we can do is we can see the, the occlusal plane, see if there's a cant or a tilt. And a lot of times you can't see that when they're just smiling. So having those lips retracted helps quite a bit. It's really important that you have the teeth apart so you can see the incisal edges. Secondly, when we're taking intraoral scans and melding them with the 2D photos and designing smiles, 
it's really important that you have the teeth and sizal edges shown. When you're calibrating the 2D to the 3D, you're picking points on both and then overlaying them. If you don't have good reference points or overlay points, the photo and the intraoral scan will not overlay properly and you may not get an alignment.